Brought to you by Mr. Crow's TV, streaming from Tempe, Arizona. And we're live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey guys, Jordan Nelson here, host of Real Estate Pros on Lister Pros TV, and today we have a special guest in our Tempe office. We have Ryan Nager of Ryan. Stunning Homes Realty, of the Ryan Nager Group, Got right? It. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and joining me on Real Estate Pros. Absolutely. Thank you for having us, you know, and thanks for all that you do for our industry, man. You know, we were just talking a little bit before, you were... You were a one-man show when I met you. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You, know, look, uh, you guys were a hard sell. Steve was like, I don't know if you, you can k handle our volume, but I was a one-man show, and, and I, I'm very thankful for him giving me a shot, you know? Yeah, uh, no, you proved yourself quick, you know, and I knew you were uh, destined for big things. Yeah, so. yeah, so that's fun. So awesome. So for those watching that don't know who you are, we'll give you a little, uh, uh, a couple minutes to introduce yourself. Cool. Uh, how long you been in real estate? What interested you in getting into this industry? And maybe something what you did pre before real estate. Okay. So I got into real estate in uh, 2010. I was 22 straight out of college. So before that really didn't have a whole lot of uh, job experience. I worked at uh, Trader Joe's throughout high school and college. Oh, nice. Um, I think there's some lessons that I kind of learned, you know, being there that uh, transi transitioned well into, um, you know, my real estate career. Um, so going through college, were you like real estate all the way? Uh, no. Because they, uh, they offered, I think at that time, I don't know if they do anymore, they offered like a real estate they did. Uh, degree. I took some real estate classes actually. Yeah, like the West Business. Side. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, when I was a sophomore in college, I actually met... Um, the guy that turned out to be like my mentor and kind of like was the broker at Ocasio Realty, uh -huh. you know, at first. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. He was like my landlord and he met me, kind of was like, hey, what are you doing for school? You know, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go, you know, business. I didn't really know, you know, what that meant at that time. But, uh, you know, he was like, you should think about getting into real estate, you know? And I was like, okay, you know, like, you seem cool. You're doing well, driving Jag, you know, like there might be something to this. Um, so I went into, um, you know, real estate, kind of like made that my, Emphasis, but I thought I was gonna get into commercial. You know, I was kind of like into like a little bit more of the numbers, you know, and like the, um, you know, what what was surrounded commercial. You know, I think at that time. Right, right. But 2010, you know, was the bottom of the market. So none of those guys were, you know, even hiring any interns. So kind of by default, I um, was like, all right, you know, I'm gonna get into residential. I wanna get, you know, busy quick. You know, I knew that commercial was kind of like a long, long road. And right, right. I wanted to get into, you know, start start doing stuff, you know, right away. And uh, so I hit up, you know, my old broker and was like, hey, you know, what do you got going on right now? And so then I came to him, started right away. And, uh, you know, then it was just kind of from there on out, you know, I was I was hooked. Yeah, so you jumped in the, the market, or I guess you would call it a more of a challenging time in 2010 because it was like a lot of REOs and short sales at that oh, time. Yeah. You know, yesterday I interviewed, I think three people that started in 05, you know, when the the boom is coming, you know, it's easy money. So you kind of started where it was kind of, I guess you would consider it a little bit of a slower market or a, a non-traditional real estate market. And I think that was a good thing for me because I didn't know any better. Right, right, know? right. Like yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, I just, I had no, um, you know, bad habits, you know. Right, uh, right. And I think, so you know, back, getting into like, money. yeah, and that's, <laughs> and that's actually one of the reasons I think I got into real estate too is because I met a couple, you know, people that were doing real estate in 2008 and, um, they did i was like hey if these guys are doing well you know maybe there's there's something that you know i can kind of take care of clients you know a little bit more like have that emphasis everybody yeah, seems yeah. to just be about the money you know and quick the flash and everything like that mm -hmm. and i was like there's got to be a different way um and so you know when i got into it 2010 you know i was just was there to just kind of help you know as much as i can i saw the opportunity like in the market at that time because mm -hmm. i went through real estate school and had you know the professor of um who was it at the time? It was before Michael Orr. Like he was like mm -hmm. our professor and was like telling us something's looming and you know, this is gonna be one of the best times to ever purchase real estate. So um, I was just and trying it to did. help. It, yeah, it, it did yeah, prove, it it prove itself out because man, uh, if you bought back in like 2010, you're, you're looking good. You're up in a few years. You know, like 
double, you know, what yeah, you paid yeah. for. I mean, it was, it's, it was crazy, you know, and that's so, um, you know, always being around, you know, Tempe and kind of seeing like the opportunity that, um, you know, the school brought, like I was a big proponent, you know, of investing, you know, in this area, you know, at that time too. So, so jumping in 2010, uh, so if you compare your business, how it looked in 2010 to how it's evolved into 2008 or 2018, how has it evolved over time? You know, were you doing a lot of short sales REOs and stuff like that in the beginning of your career? And then obviously you're at a, in a group now. Yeah. So kind of take us through how the evolution's gone about. Well, my business has always been primarily with buyers, you know, so I wasn't like a big short sale listing, you know, guy. Um, so a lot of, you know, the stuff when I was first starting was, you know, investor, um, you know, related. And then as, you know, my sphere, you know, started getting into, you know, the home buying process, um, it's kind of really, you know, expanded into, you know, mostly, you know, the people that I have in my network and then, you know, what we do to try to, you know, generate leads, you know, as a group. Right. Yeah. So, uh, how, how does, how does the, uh, the Ryan Nager group look right now? What is, what is, how is it built out? Because I, we want to talk on this. Ryan actually was out of, out of the country for a few months. So mm -hmm. obviously if you're running a successful real estate company group, you know, you got to have the right pieces in place to be able to do that. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, the structure of your team and how you're able to sure. to live in Costa Rica for four straight months. It was three. Three, but, three months. <laughs> that, was, then, that was a good, right amount of time. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, the, you know, the group has kind of been around for a couple of years now. Um, you know, and really, I think I was extremely, you know, fortunate to kind of have people that were on my team right away that, um, you know, have, have stayed with me, you know, have been, you know, huge proponents of, you know, why I could do something like that. So, you know, just getting the right people, you know, right away, you know, I think that's, you know, what I was able to do and then kind of put in some systems, you know, in places um, and give, you know, some more responsibility, you know, to those team members, um, you know, while I was away and, it, you know, it went, went awesome. You know, it was, it was, it was really encouraging, you know, to see, I don't think I'll ever, you know, do anything like that long. You know, there's, there's some other, you know, motivations, you know, there for that sure, long, sure, but sure. <laughs> it was, uh, it was really cool to see. Yeah. So if somebody, if, uh, if you'd give uh, some advice to somebody, maybe that's somebody's goal, you know, you know, they're a grinding out real estate agent right now and they want to grow that team to be able to, you know, not necessarily be, where you're working seven days a week and you have to be here, you know, to build a team and to be able to do it. How, how, what, you know, what advice would you give to people? How, how uh, would they be able to transition and be able to do something like that? I got you. Yeah. I think at first you've got to be able to like invest a lot of your own time, you know, mm -hmm. into their development. I mean, I couldn't have done this like unless I knew, you know, the people that were, um, you know, on the team, um, you know, had a solid foundation on what right, they were right. doing, you know, so I wasn't doing as much, you know, training, you know, as I would here, but I was still, um, you know, meeting with them or talking to them on a weekly basis and kind of like providing some level of accountability, right, right. Um, you know, still while I was away. So, gotcha, gotcha. you know, I couldn't do that if I had like brand new agents, but everybody that's been with me has been there a couple of years. And so, you know, they, they have an idea of, you know, what they're doing. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So you said, uh, so it's the Ryan Nager group, your wife, your, or congratulations, Fairly newly, newly, what hell yeah, have you been married now? Over six months now. All right, yeah. six months, and uh, she handles the marketing side of uh, the Ryan Nager Group. She does. So. Yeah, she handles a lot of our marketing, so like our newsletters, our client events that we do, you know, birthday programs, um, kind of like all of, a lot of our outreach, um, you know, things. And so does the majority of your business come from like your sphere of influence, past? clients or what, where, where, where are you finding that a lot of your business is coming from? It's, it's definitely our, our network, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I'd probably say it's about like 75, 25, you know, most of it's coming from our sphere, you know, um, you know, and what we do to, um, you know, reach out to past clients, you know, and, um, and then a lot of it, you know, the other part comes from like our internet leads, you mm -hmm. know, and kind of our follow-up systems and like what we try to, um, you know, do, you know, as a team to kind of ex help expand, you know, that network. Right, right, that right. was always my mentality when I got into it, you know. It's like, I'll work internet leads, you know, because eventually, you know, I'm going to make this person, you know, a past client, you know, and they're going to refer me, you know, because I'm going to deliver, you know, such, do a, such a good job for them. Right, right, right. And that's a good point because, uh, you know, to be able to build a business that's based around referrals and past clients, you know, you have to have delivered a, a solid interaction, solid level of customer service, you know, on the first transaction. So how, what do you do to help manage, you know, that experience? And also why do people choose to go with uh, Ryan Nager Group? What, 
you know, what are those things that those expectations and those things that you guys do as a team that makes you different than, you know, your average agent down the street? Um, I, you know, I'd honestly say just follow up with what you said you were going to do. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if it's as simple as, a, you know, um, you know, making that extra phone call, you know, or like telling somebody that you're you know going to follow up at a certain time. Like we just tried to um, look at this as like, well, how would I want to be treated if I was going through this process? Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's a lot of communication, you know, that's um, a lot of care, you know, too. Like I'm going to tell people if you know, I think something's a good deal or, you know, like I'm going to be able to like use, want to use my experience, you know, to try to help, um, you know, make their um, experience, you know, more, you know, like a little better, you know. Right, right. And we know, uh, uh, so you started your real estate career at Ocasio Real, real Estate, uh, but you've been at Stunning Home Realty ever since I, I've known you. Yeah. Uh, at least four years. I, I don't know. I was thinking like, yeah, 2000. 14, yeah, 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 yeah. 13. Or you may, yeah, it was like third at the beginning of 2014, I think. So, anyways, uh, uh, talk to uh, us. You know, we know there's a lot of options when it comes to brokerage. Why do you, why did you choose uh, Stunning Homes Realty, and why do you stay with them? Well, um, like we were talking a little bit before about Steve. You know, he's the broker owner. Um, Steve was the like office manager at Acasio when I first got uh, mm -hmm. into real estate too. So, Steve and I have honestly been he's been you know with me my entire career you know and he's somebody that um i can always just rely on you know he's he's always looking for you know new ways to do things um, new ways to improve you know what we're doing as a brokerage you know and as an agent level and also gives back you know a lot to the agents and so um you know he was um part of the reason i did that vacation you mm -hmm. know like he kind of gave me that motivation it was like do this, you know, because traveling was always something I was super interested in. But like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. I've seen like, you gone to some really, uh, maybe not for that extended amount of time, but some pretty. Uh, didn't did you go to like Indonesia or some other places in that Thailand? Thailand, yeah, there we go. Couple, couple Thailand, I re I remember pictures from that. that yeah, was pretty cool. But yeah, no man, it's uh, you know, I think that you know, traveling for me, I did that when I was like you know, a year into the business, having a little bit of success. And I was like, I, I want to go do something. And it was cool because I felt like it got me out of my comfort zone. Sure, yeah, you know? yeah. And in this business, you need to constantly, you know, be doing that. And, uh, you know, I did, you know, a month, you know, by myself and I was like, all right, you know, how do I meet new people? You know? And so it was just like all these different experiences. And every time I come back, I come back, you know, motivated, you know, op you know, open, you know, to new ideas and to, you know, connecting with new people. And, uh, you know, I think it's something that, you know, continues to, you know, help drive me too. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, what, what would you say the, the current state of uh, the market is? You know, some people would say we're in a bubble, but other people say it's kind of a normal market. You know, you've been in the, the industry for several years. You know, uh, you know, what would you say are, are the current state of the market, I guess, or where, where we're headed here in the, in the near future? Do you have a an outlook on that? Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to think I do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's, it is, it is, I've never been in, you know, a market that has not, you know, kind of increased, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, I think that all of the indicators, you know, especially around the Phoenix market have continued to be strong. I mean, we're seeing people that are like coming into the state. Not many people are, you know, are migrating out. Right, of here. right, right. So, you know, that coupled with, you know, all the businesses that are starting to come here too. I mean, unless there's just a huge amount of supply, you know, that totally enters the market. I don't see anything, you know, yeah, changing. So, so right know, now it's like, very low inventory right yeah. now. So are you finding that, um, you know, what's the secret to, cause uh, you represent a lot of buyers, right? So we know that, you know, I think under $300,000 price point, you're probably uh, a lot of times competing with other agents and other offers because uh, houses don't send, don't tend to sit on the market too long when the inventory is really low. So how, how do you guys, um, you know, you know, what are those things that you do for buyers that try to make sure that they, they get the, the house um, that they want? Or, or is there anything specific that they do or you just go in head to head, compete? And, I think uh, there's, you know, little things that, you know, we try to do and try to teach, you know, um, like, you know, our agents to do. And, the, you know, the first one, you know, I think is like setting ex realistic expectations, you know, for, you know, the client, you know, about the state of the market, you know, mm -hmm. depending on where they're looking, their price point, you know, and some of their features. Um, 
then you know the next part is uh, you know like having some sort of rapport you know with like the listing agents you know before you just send over an offer you know try to find out if there's any uh, any of those like idiosyncrasies you know that the sellers are looking for or, like what else we can do to try to make our person you know look better you know mm-hmm. than the five other competing offers that they have you know right, and right. so um, I think it's, you know, it's just a matter of like, again, like communication, you know, like when listing agents, they'll, if we're in a multiple offer situation, you know, they'll call us and I'll actually answer, you know, my phone and they're like, okay, you know, out of the three other offers that we got, you know, two didn't, two didn't answer, you know, I like, right, you, right, right, you actually right, answered right. your phone, you know, you're responding back to me, like your right. lender, you know, is and part that, of the that, process. That's actually something that I think a lot of agents may take for granted. Like even the seller agents, they, they also want a successful closing for their clients. Sure. So if there's a lot of close uh, offers, you know, they may want to say, hey, this guy is really uh, on the ball and he's great at communicating. Yeah. You know, that that's something to take into consideration. Without a doubt, you know, and I do it when, you know, we have the listings, you know, if I, I look up the person, you know, um, and want to see that, you know, there's going to be a level of um, like communication, you know, and the process is going to be, you know, relatively, you know, try to make it as smooth as we can, you know, for our seller too. Um, so, you know, we highlight that we have like a transaction coordinator in, in our office, you know, that's, you know, kind of be there for, you know, any extra communication, you know, with them and, um, you know, have the lender, you know, get involved with, you know, kind of reaching out and kind of letting them know the qualification process. Too, yeah, so. absolutely. So if somebody watching this, uh, you know, maybe a potential seller or buyer in the, do you cover all of Phoenix or what, do you have a area of expertise or? I mean, we uh, do, you know, cover all of Phoenix. I'd, I'd say we tend to kind of focus more on like the East Valley, Tempe, Scottsdale, mm-hmm. you know, like Phoenix market. I'm, I'm not, you know, on the West West side too often, but mm-hmm. you know, we'll help, you know, people wherever, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of where, you know, we've, we tend to like focus. Gotcha. All right, so if somebody's watching and they want to hire you or, or look into your services, um, how do people get a hold of you? Sure. Um, I think you've got my email and uh, phone right at the bottom of here. So shoot me an email or, you know, give me a call. You know, I, I do answer my phone, um, you know, and we'll get back to you, you know, very quickly. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day, Ryan. Appreciate you, buddy. Hey, man, glad to have you in studio. Thanks, man. And we will see you guys on the next episode.